알잖아 어차피 쉬운 일은 없지만 서도 난 네가 있었어 모두 다 괜찮아 사랑은 내게 다른 게 아니고 사진 속 우리의 웃음이 다야 Hi, Carrot Rosie here. It goes without saying that Seventeen is one of, if not my favorite band of all time. So it is only right that I made a special video specifically for them. If you've seen any video of mine similar to this, you know that these videos aren't just mere tier lists. They are an appreciation for the art they've made throughout the years. But of course at the same time I won't be holding back with my opinions. This list will be limited to Korean or English title tracks and pre-releases only, sung and performed by all 13 members. That means no Japanese songs, no subunit songs, no special covers, no solo, no b-sides, all that. But even with only 21 songs, I'll be trying my greatest in acknowledging their music and how they've affected me. And before we start here are my credentials. Though I don't consider myself a carrot like most of y'all, I still pretty much love them to the moon and back. Here's the actual tier list by the way. The higher the better, and the lower the worse. Don't mind the name much, that's just me trying to be funny. But anyways if you want to try it out yourself there will be a link in the description. This is heavily a subjective list, so if you hate my placements you are free to make your own. Enough said, this will be a long one. Grab a snack or two, and please enjoy the video. Oh, 되게 무대 경험이 많은 친구들이다. 되게 노련하다라는 얘기를 좀 듣고 싶어요. 그게 목표입니다. 늘 뭔가 모르게 불안감이 있었어요. 근데 그 불안감이 무대 올라갔을 때 행복감으로 덮어졌던 거예요. 다른 이제 K-pop 가수 선배님들이 저 사람 받는 사람들이 왜 팬분들한테 저렇게 하고 이런지 몰랐어요. 근데 받아보니까 감히 함부로 평가할 수 있는 게 아니더라고. 여러분, I don't exactly know how Pledis managed to bag great dancers, singers, rappers, and producers under their belt. But whatever it is they were very lucky to have them. Remember when Seventeen used to do these funky pop songs for their title tracks? Yeah, those were great times. I won't be that guy and say old Seventeen was better, but I will say that these songs were perfect for them. When I think of Seventeen as a group of people I think chaos, fun, loud, yet still natural and sweet. I think those are the qualities that make Seventeen so lovable, their personalities and vibe. And that feeling being with most of their early work, I can't help but adore them much more. Seventeen doesn't just feel like a bunch of people grouped into one for money or whatever. They feel like a genuine friendship of 13 boys on their way to reach for their dreams together. Adore You is a simple and sweet song filled with a lot of passion. Though it may not be their best, it is still pretty much enjoyable. They might they need a gesture Might as well have to back boy Boy, they will not submit boy Say I'm so stupid Say the fucking name alright Usually I'd be complaining about how they released almost the exact same song back to back But this time I won't be Why is that? Because literally who else was doing music like this? When I think 2015 K-pop music I think of diversity Compared to let's say recent years, 2015 was an exciting year. You weren't hearing the same concepts and genres over and over again because everyone was doing their own shit. And 17 right here was doing the same funky sound, and they nailed it every single time. I might in fact like this even more than Adore You. For their first few comebacks 17 was just out to get any girl. Crushes, dates, confessions. That was 17 in their early days, and I'm not gonna lie it was pretty sweet. It was so sweet and cute that it could make a grown man giggle. And seeing Jong Han with that hair already did, so add that with the lyrics and all, it's really a deadly combo. 
the music in itself has nothing that great to offer if we're being honest. Nothing technically or musically advanced here. It's just simply a good song with a charming message. It reminds me of the little crushes we had when we were still a kid. It was dumb, young, but the feelings were still true. And I believe their next work fully encapsulated that feel. 17 Love songs aren't the most innovative thing man has created, but it will always be the realest. Everyone including you have felt this emotion at least once. Not every song has to have a deep and philosophical meaning, and these simple emotions are what I believe they were and still are great at portraying. Pretty You is probably their least relevant title track. And to me that is a fucking crime, because this song is beautiful inside and out. It's about time I praise them for their writing. These boys are great lyricists no doubt. Lyrics like, I want to pick and gather all the pretty words for you, are so simple yet so effective. If someone told me that, I'd fall in love right on the spot no kidding, it's almost poetic even. And this doesn't just apply to this song in particular, I'm talking about their whole discography before and after this. If Seventeen has a message they want to convey, they'll do it in the most efficient way possible. A single sentence equals a book of countless pages. Not just the lyrics, but also the production for Pretty You was memorable. Unlike their previous two titles, this one was a bit more laid back. It's almost like a serenade. No loud and fancy effects, just them, us, and the sincere message of the music. Lyrics so good it almost makes me cry. I don't know if you and your mum hate this song, but to my ears this was prettily made. And the fact that this is considered by some as their weakest title track will never sit right with me. A song this beautiful deserves more than the love already given to it. I just had to show y'all the full bridge because that shit is music at its finest. This was and still is a truly wonderful song that I hope more will discover and love in the future. There were still some improvements that could have been done, but all in all it's a fantastic song that deserves this spot. Plus this was the song that got them their first music show win, making this even more special to all of us. Arguably their best and most popular title track ever, and rightfully so to be honest. The previous three songs were definitely loved, but this song right here is what I'd consider their first ever break. If you didn't already know who Seventeen was you definitely did after this one. Even till this day I consider this one of K-pop's greatest songs. Because where else can a song like this ever do well other than here in Korean pop music? Nothing gets me more pumped and excited than this song right here. Woozy and Bumzu were on something when they made this one for sure. This song was essentially every one of their previous titles compiled into one then multiplied by a thousand. This type of sound and vibe is only present with Seventeen, and it's very apparent with this specific song. The pure rush, energy, and adrenaline this emits is out of this world. I am never not moving to this song whenever it plays. It's fast-paced in the most natural way possible, and it's borderline obnoxious, but it is oh so good. And let me remind you they were barely a year into their career when they released this. Always leave it to Seventeen with having fun performing their music. To anyone who has been in the concerts you're probably sick of this song and wouldn't want to hear it for another three days. That being said, this is the only song I'll let play 17 million times without getting sick of it. This song is memorable and will outlive generations of music that comes after it. I just know. Music this great deserves no other spot than this. It was perfect in every aspect possible, and it goes to show everyone how talented they really are as artists. And I wish I could say the same about this song. While I do enjoy listening to it, there really isn't any reason why this should be together with Adore You or even Manse. And there are very much a few reasons why this is considered their weakest. This song is mad boring, there I said it. Here's how I see it alright. Every 17 song at its core is good. How they alter in rank is with the other qualities the songs have. Very nice is loud and obnoxious in a good way. Pretty You was sweet and adorable. Adore You was funky and all. 
But what about this song? Nothing. It's like unseasoned chicken. Chicken is great and all but wouldn't it be better with some salt and pepper? Again. I enjoy the song sometimes, but this would be last in any 17 list. The choreography and performances that came with it were great, but the music? I'd rather not. Boom Boom stands. As much as I want to sympathize y'all this is just not that great of a song. But the album that came with it was no doubt still one of their best works, so I guess it cancels out. This is also the first teaser of what would come to be 17's mature side. But other than that, this is as far as mid goes. I won't be too harsh on it, because this was the last time we saw 17 as rookies. This felt like them easing us, an interlude perhaps, to their new and improved era, which in my opinion has some of their best work to date. This is where we say goodbye to the rookie era, and here we also say welcome to their new one. I'd like to refer to this one as their teenage era, as everything here becomes a foundation of what 17 is and will become as artists. This was the first emotional 17 title track we got, and it was unquestionably amazing. It's still pretty much one of their most successful songs ever. Other than fun music, 17 really excels at heartfelt and powerful music. As much as I loved the funkiness and still miss it a lot, this is something I love very much as well. Like I said this was a new beginning for them. They had to come back with something different before the people got sick of them, and they absolutely did that. Not only was the style and genre different, but also the way they put it all together. They've been straightforward with their positions before this. If you're in the vocal team you sing, and if you're in the rap line you rap, and if you're in the performance team you'll do some crazy moves. Simple as that right? For this song and those that came after it, they've completely abandoned that. You'd hear rappers and dancers sing soulfully, vocalist moving up here down their left right, showing us a side that we haven't seen with their previous works. And of course the song itself was beautifully made. Yes it may sound outdated, but at its peak it was wonderful. It is a track full and loaded with emotions from beginning to end. Especially with a bridge like that which I think is the best part of the song. The strings, the lyrics, the vocals, the everything about it, it was perfect. That bridge was so good that I had to put it up another tier. If you're asking me why this amazing song isn't any higher, like I said, the music itself feels outdated. If this was 2016 and Chainsmokers were still the biggest artists in the world, sure, maybe I'd consider. But it's been almost 7 years and this is just a sound that didn't age well. But its impact and iconicness will definitely live on for years to come. <laughs> New era, yet still the same 17. The fun life never left them and I can tell that with this song. This was officially the first comeback of theirs that I knew of, and immediately they caught my eye, or rather ears. But definitely eyes too. This tier list is all about the music, so I don't want to hinder my opinions by looking at any choreography or video. That being said I wouldn't be this huge of a 17 fan if it weren't for their performances. They are dancing like their rent is due, but this time it might not actually be a joke. Clean, precise, synchronized. That's how I'd describe their dances, and I know y'all would say the same as well. For a song like this that has a lot of energy, you'd need to have something that complements that energy through your performances. And thank god they are amazing dancers because their choreographies easily elevates how much their songs can be enjoyed. One big factor all these K artists have to consider is the fact that these songs are meant to be performed. Meaning they have to make music made not only for the ears, but also for the eyes. And 17 has always been great at that. It's clear that the music at its maximum is with the dancing. Clap is a song about someone who has been living in isolation dedicated to growing and stepping into the new world. 
And what better way to translate that into music but with a funky rock-influenced dance track? Seventeen can convey messages in many ways they want. If they want to make you cry, they surely will. If they want you to be cheerful, they'll do exactly that. They've always been masters at making cool and engaging music that is still transparent to human emotion. And honestly, I'll forever thank them for that. This was the song that made me love Seventeen. After this song, the rest was history. I still remember clearly where I was, what I was doing, and what I loved when this album was released. I don't know how exactly, it's not like it was a significant moment in my life, but somehow I remember it all vividly. This is one very expensive way of saying thank you to your fans, but damn is it very touching. Like genuinely speaking, this is one of the few K-pop songs that can bring tears to my eyes. You can tell with every line and move that these are sincere feelings coming from them. The best thing about the music is how it was presented. The song itself is rather simple and doesn't provide anything really groundbreaking. But it's still great nonetheless. The song has a powerful beat thanks to the incredible bass, which also makes it all quite addictive. That drop is still one of the better beat drops K-pop has to offer. From the build-up of the rappers, to slowing down with the vocals as it climaxes, and releases all that energy when the drop finally hits. And same with Clack, the choreography has a huge part to play with the overall essence of the song. Thanks is so perfect even the fanchants for it are notable. They had carrots rapping for the chant, it was actually crazy. And then it ends, which is probably the worst part. To me this track was more than just beats and lyrics. It was an experience, one that is very special to me, and of course, their fans. Fan songs are always important for fans and artists alike, and in my opinion, this is the best one I've heard. Thanks will forever be a song that I'll never forget. I don't care if it's considered noise music or whatever, but the fact that a group I barely stand at the time made me emotional will forever stick with me. Seventeen has always been impressive as a group, and not only because of their music nor their performances, but their gratefulness to their fans has always been nice to see. All has been good so far, but this might be the part where we start disagreeing with one another. I think the song is good. I really believe so. I just don't think it's all that. Yes I know, it's cute, it's nice, and truthfully speaking there is nothing technically wrong with it, but I just personally don't like it as much as you do. Let me explain. At first I thought the song was underwhelming. After their last three comebacks my expectations were through the roof. Not like I was wanting another Aju Nice or another Don't Wanna Cry. I wasn't. What I was expecting was something more interesting to listen to. Oh my was a little too basic in my opinion. Like I said I don't hate it, I still pretty much enjoy the song. It's just that compared to literally everything else in their discography, this one felt a little weaker than normal. I know simplicity was their approach for this title track, but I felt like they still could have done more with it. I did like the bridge a lot though, I think that's one redeeming factor this song has. But other than that, I'd rather not care about her. I don't hate the song, but on a grander scale this song ain't much. Sorry not sorry. Maybe if they did a darker concept I'd start liking them more. <laughs> My bad, is that good music that I hear playing in the background? Yes it is. How fantastic. You don't know the struggle back then. There wasn't a day in the carrot lands where we didn't ask for a dark concept. Not that we weren't satisfied with what we had, in fact we were, we just felt like there was still a side of 17 we haven't fully seen that could potentially be great. We've seen glimpses and teases here and there, but never a full-on aggressive, dark and gritty one like this. I don't know how everyone else reacted to this, but personally I was thrilled, just maybe a bit too much. Immediately it became one of my favorite 17 songs and it still is. 
Sometimes I forget about this song for a while, but every time I get reminded of it I just go feral. The hold this song had on me was insane. The change was crazy actually. It's like seeing a nerdy guy with glasses suddenly grinding on the floor causing an earthquake. But Winter Rosie, what is it that you like so much about the song? Everything. Down to the most minuscule detail. Performance? Check. Music? Check. Charisma? Check. All of the not mentioned? Probably check as well. How'd we go from oh my to this? I don't know. But it is because of this song that I really felt we've entered a new era of 17. No more little crushes and confessions I'm afraid. After this I expected almost every release following it to be darker in tone. Back then I was 100% confident that the main title track will be as, or even greater than this one. A lot darker, a lot more intense, those were my expectations. And while I think that still could have been a great comeback, the song we received was much more remarkable than what I'd imagine. Seventeen has always been diverse with their sounds and styles with every comeback. But even until this day I feel like this has to be their most unique title track yet. It's a sound you'd normally never hear as a title track, both with Seventeen and the industry. Laid back music can often be mistaken as boring, because it honestly isn't. This is kind of hypocritical of me since I said the same thing about oh my being too simple, while I'm here about to praise the shit out of this song. But I don't care anymore, it's how I felt and that's what I'll follow. The song starts pretty mellow, almost dozy, then it slowly but surely picks up pace, ending it right before it drops. Suddenly it goes back to being calm, but still the chorus continues to rise in anticipation, and then that's when the song finally releases everything. This song is kind of like a play on emotions, like a roller coaster full of ups and downs, or like a sea with unpredictable waves. They've done a great job making this song feel as homey as possible, one that exudes a sense of security and well-being. I just really believe that these kinds of songs right here are what suits Seventeen the best. Music that I find comforting. Having someone to rely on is good, but it's also nice to be that person. I know well that a lot of you, especially carrots have found love in this group, and not in a weird way. It's a wholesome relationship you can't experience anywhere else. Both idols and fans may not know each other personally, but somehow we still make each other happy. And if you were to ask me, I think that's something beautiful. A home can be more than just a building with doors and windows. It can also be a person or a group of people who make you feel safe and comfortable. And to me, that's what the song truly feels like. That feeling of you wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world but in this moment right now. Home concludes what I consider to be their teenage era. They've improved themselves and attracted many with their style and music, making their way to fame. But it is now time to fully show off their true abilities. And for this era, I'd like to refer to it as their renaissance. Remember when I said K-pop songs were made with the intent of being performed with choreographies? Yeah? Well guess who does it the best? 
Exactly. Even with their other existing performance intensive songs, nothing comes close to what HIT did for them. Not only was this a certified club banger, but also one of their best works. Songs like this one require you to accept them just as they are. The song was made to be loud and electrifying, but I'd understand why some people wouldn't like it. That being said, this is still pretty much a perfect song to my ears. I always loved the energy 17 brings to their projects. You could always tell they are having fun making and presenting them, and that is exactly what HIT does the best. That feeling of being higher than the clouds and nothing to stop you, because you are in control. There is no denying that this was one of their recent hits at the time. I mean this is K-pop we're talking about. Exciting music plus exciting choreography is the perfect formula. And the thing is they get it right every single time, with this being no exception. Seventeen made an already popular style and music sound new and refreshing, and that is quite hard to do. Was this song made for the charts? A hundred percent. But there is no denying that this is also Seventeen at full liberty. So yes, this was also for the arts. It's okay, bambuke, nepuke, saranghe, I have a lot to say about this song. Let me share the journey I had with fear, because it was quite interesting. In the beginning I wasn't feeling it at all, I thought it was too dark for them. I know my hypocritical ass is at it again. But didn't you say you wanted to see the boys do something more mature? Yes I did, which makes my initial opinion on it kind of dishonest. But I do know how I feel, and at the time the song wasn't hitting just right for me. A few months later I checked it out again, and to no surprise I began liking it. But I still thought this dark concept of theirs wasn't it. I thought the energetic and cute stuff suited them more. Fear came off to me as a bit too emo and dramatic for 17. While I did admire the art, my critical ass still didn't love it much. And now, a few years later, do I still like it? Absolutely, much more than how I used to. While I still do think their other stuff suits them more, I don't believe this as a bad attempt at the concept anymore. In fact I kind of wish for them to do something more like it. Because even if it was all emo and dark, they did it in a way only 17 can do, and that's doing it with passion and intensity. Not only are they great dancers, singers, or producers, they are also great actors. Whatever the concept was they will embody it like it was their own. In the case of Fear, the song explores the dark theme of being a poison to those you love. And that is exactly what I feel when I listen to it. Though not my favorite, this still holds to be one of their best works to date. Twenty twenty was definitely a time our generation will never forget. Not to speak on everyone's behalf, but those were pretty dark times for a lot of us. And I feel like this next stretch of comebacks from Seventeen were released just at the perfect time. My my, or rather this whole album, is in my opinion their best album yet. The feelings I have for the song and album are pretty much the same, so let me just rephrase what I said in a previous video of mine. I adore them for what they did with this album because it is so real. You can tell that this album was made with heart. Hangare is a Korean phrase that signifies tossing up someone in celebration. When we try to find answers to our worries, we want to suggest there is always a way up forward, as in the term hangare. These were Woozy's words, and I believe they sum up this album's genuine meaning the best. It sometimes makes me cry while I listen to it. So I suppose I got the message they were trying to convey. The album was one massive healing experience, which was much more of a greater present during those times. The album, in my opinion, was flawless, but I can't say the same for this particular track. My My was great but not in a level of perfection some of their other songs had. So I think it's safe to put this song in between these two tiers right here. <laughs> I used to not like this song, like heavily to the point I wish it never existed. I thought it was borderline annoying, tasteless, just the worst thing they've ever created. 
But remember that I was also 16 and I was a little dumbass complaining about everything. Not knowing where and what I'm doing in my life. Which is ironic because that's literally what the song and album's theme is all about. Before I talk about how I ended up liking it, let me defend my old self for a bit. Or at least try to. Okay I got none. I guess it was one of those times where I just simply wasn't feeling it at all. The song had to grow on me, and it honestly didn't take long to do so. I thought left and right was 17 coming back to their original roots, just in a different style. Fun and enjoyable music, except this time it sounds like it came straight from the early 2000s. At this point in their career I was still amazed by how they are able to provide the same but different experiences with their music. That same experience coming from the magic earlier 17 songs possessed, while the difference coming from the new genres they love tackling. But while I do enjoy listening to it I don't think I like it as much as I thought. I've never really compared every one of their songs much, so I mostly enjoyed the music as is. But in a tier list setting I don't see this song anywhere higher than here. I don't think it's bad. I just don't have the same satisfaction listening to it unlike the ones higher up the tiers, which are considerably greater. Not gonna lie, this song was on repeat for a good 6 months or so. You don't understand, I was addicted to this alright. Left and Right did introduce back the fun and enjoyable group 17 was known for, but I feel like Homer and was truly the one to give it justice. For me this song was perfect, actually flawless. By far their most entertaining song, and that says a lot considering the fact 80% of their music is already very much entertaining. I don't know, I guess the concept they went for here just fit really well with the vibe of 17. They've always been the theater kids of K-pop. Each one of them has a character to play and all of them stand out. And that's how I'd describe the song. Pure and just endless streams of fun and excitement. You can certainly feel the charisma these boys have through Homeron. You could tell they enjoy performing it and that's honestly all I could ask for. I really don't have anything else to say about this song other than it's perfect. Is it my favorite? No, but I have barely any criticism against it. It's flawless, it's well made, and it's composed of everything that makes Seventeen a great group. And if you didn't already get it, that means it's peak for me. And that was the end of their renaissance. We are now at the final, and I won't be surprised, soon to be their best era yet. It is the point where they take everything they've learned, and presenting it to us in the most modern and flawless way. And of course, I'm talking about them being professionals. I'm ready to love, let go, my head draw. Can we stay together? Can we stay together? I'm a photo for you, let mama, need you tear forever, need you tear forever. It doesn't matter how much you love or hate this song, because it doesn't change the fact this is the most different 17 title track. In fact it almost doesn't feel like a song made by them at all, which was a massive contrast to their previous track that I just considered to be the song with the most 17 flair. I love Bang PD, I really do. I love what he's done for the industry and his work with these idol groups. From BTS to the rookie groups of today, it is clear this man knows how to make music. And while I still think this is the least 17 sounding song they've made, I love what Bang PD did with this comeback as well. It's great honestly. We get to see 17 under other producers, presenting their own vision for this group without straying away from what they are at their core. 17 makes music from the heart, and I still could feel that with this one, while still having that distinct Hitman Bang style. This really reminds me of BTS's old heartbreak era during 2015, and I still consider that to be their best. Sure Ready to Love may not be the best as a work of Bang PD and 17 individually, but together, I think it creates a unique experience that we'll never see or hear again. Sure I love seeing 17 take full control of the music they make, but there are more talented producers out there that can help or even elevate the fantastic songs they already make. We love a little diversity here in this house, and we most definitely love good music here too.
Rock With You is what I'd imagine if Ready To Love was made completely by Seventeen. And frankly, it was better. I believe this to be the group's most straightforward title track. It takes no time creating or diverting into something revolutionary. This song is essentially the culmination of all they've learned over the last few years of songwriting. We've seen them do rock already, and when has it not been an amazing listen? Clap. Happy ending. Ready to love. Every one of Seventeen's rock songs let out something in me. Low key I feel like simpler songs like these are unbeatable. Cause while I like it when groups get ambitious and all, there's this level of realness you can't get with songs like Let's Say Home Run or Fear. Rock isn't even my favorite genre of music, but I know I'll never get the same raw feelings in other genres like how I do with rock. Well of course in this case there's no actual rock band playing in each stage of this song, but the presence is still there. I always wondered why listening to rock gives off a distinct feel compared to most genres. I thought I was the only one feeling this way. After a little research I saw most people consider it to be versatile and uplifting. Just simply positive vibes all around. And we all know Seventeen are masters at making you feel that way. Rock With You doesn't make any attempt to differentiate itself, and to me that is one of its greatest strengths. But for a song that is heavily influenced by the rock genre I wish they turned up the volume a little higher. Like let me hear the guitar more please thank you. But other than that, I think the song is beautifully well made. Darling was quite underwhelming for me. It was a new year and new era, they just got back from releasing their best song in current times, and let's say I was expecting a bit more. Don't get me wrong Darling was cute and all. The song was in English so more fans would understand. The message itself was pretty sweet, but it was a little too relaxed. Almost boring for my taste. It's not their first time doing a song like this. We've seen them done it before and in my opinion those were much better attempts than what Darling came out to be. To me that chorus was too plain. I actually like the rest of the song, especially the bridge and Jun's line in the second verse, but even then I thought we still could have gotten much more essence in the song. I don't think it's bad, but if there was a time Seventeen has ever disappointed me, this was it. Thank god this was just a pre-release and not an actual title, because the title itself was one definite banger of a song. <laughs> I fucking love this song. Even with recency bias aside I think this will be one of their best titles in the long run. Because one thing about them is that they'll write and perform music as if they were still in that green basement struggling to debut. Hot is a song overwhelmingly full of passion and presence. Every time this song plays it reminds me of how much Seventeen has grown and improved all the years. They are still the same 13 boys from Pledis with a dream. That dream of connecting and inspiring fans with their love for music and dance. And not even in a poetic sense, the song itself just straight up bangs. If there was one boy group song that stood out from the countless girl group bangers from last year, it would be this song. And why are we even surprised? Seventeen has always been good at it. No matter how many groups debut after them they will never be overthrown. They are in a league of their own and I know you know that too. The title is very fitting. This song was a statement. A song about Seventeen themselves. They are here reminding everyone that the fire in their eyes has never left and will never leave. The dedication of their fans and the love they have for the art will forever remain. Like an unstoppable force that does nothing but keep moving forward. A group of almost 8 years would never settle for less, and to be honest that's one reason why my standards are up there. There are no excuses for low effort performances when a group like them exists. Hot proves that Seventeen hasn't lost their touch. These boys won't be slowing down anytime soon, and I hope you're prepared for more.
부터 널 봤어 우린 처음이지만 모든 잼을 느낄 수 있어 더 해보고 싶어 We've at last arrived at their latest Korean title track and last song of this tier list. World was a nice contrast from Hot. The song itself is basic but still pretty much fun to listen to. I'm only putting this in the middle cause I don't think it's any better than these nor is it any worse than these. But like most 17 songs the real magic of the music comes from the inside and its meaning. I've always wondered why there was an underscore before the world. Not only with this song too. A lot of their titles have some sort of sign attached to it. I always thought it was a stylistic choice just to make it look cooler. And I mean it does. But with 17 I assumed it was something deeper than that. A little research and there it was. That underscore is a space for you to fill in. As Woozy said, that space is what you want your world to be. 17 uses the underscore to remind us that we have the freedom to define our own reality. It is entirely up to us what goals we have, how we want the world to be, and how we choose to view the world. As we've established many times in this video, 17 aren't just here to make songs to enjoy. They make music that can relate to us, that can help us through tough times. From their very first song to this moment right now, 17 wishes to inspire this generation, and show us a world full of creativity and freedom. And this is what I mean whenever I say they are a special group. They never had the best music, nor the best videos, the best producers, nor the best choreographies. Well maybe they do, but the point is they aren't the greatest most talented and influential group of 13 boys ever. But, you will never see a group like them ever again. 17 is a group that respects themselves, their work, and the people who support them. No wonder why Carrots are labeled as one of the more kind of fandoms. They commit to a group that uplifts and communicates inspiring messages. Releasing 100 plus songs under your own name and creative vision isn't something most K-pop groups can say. 17 should be more than proud of themselves for all of their achievements. And I'm not even talking about awards, sales, or money. They've created a safe space for many people that they can call home. And even after many years in the future, fans will look back at these moments as a significant time in their lives. I wholeheartedly thank 17 for giving us these incredible songs that are timeless. I may not be their biggest fan, but they've done just enough to impact my life moving forward. And I know many diehard carrots know this feeling better than me. So once again, we thank you for being an inspiration and impacting many of our lives. I know this isn't the last, and there are more things you have to share with us, and we're more than glad to follow you into this new world. In my, in my, in my new